Let's once again talk about audio and let's talk about how you can control the audio volume for entire tracks. Let's expand the audio track one. And by the way, other than just dragging on it or shift mouse wheeling up, you can also double click on this track to expand it. Works with the video layers as well and just double click again to collapse them. Let's zoom in a little bit. And this clip here at the end, we have played with the audio and we've added some keyframes as well to kind of cut out this slam sound for the door. But what if we now wanted to make all of these clips, everything on audio track one, all of the sounds that came with our original video a little bit softer. Now we could go through the timeline and drag the volume for every single clip down, but that'll bring you a little bit too close to insanity, especially if you have a lot of edits on your timeline. Let's undo those changes again, and let's instead adjust the audio volume for this entire audio track. For that, we're going to use the audio track mixer. You can enable the audio track mixer if you come into window, and there should be an option for audio track mixer. Let's bring this up. And this audio track mixer represents the audio tracks you have in your currently selected sequence. So with my first edit open in our timeline, we have three audio tracks, audio one, audio two, and audio three, representing audio track one, two, and three in our timeline. The names even match up and that's not a coincidence. You can actually rename these audio tracks either by right clicking on them and selecting to rename. Maybe let's call this one original, hit enter. And you'll also see that name update in the audio track mixer because these controls here on the left hand side refer to audio track one, which we've now renamed to original. Let's call audio track two music because in our timeline on audio track two, we've placed the music. And on audio track three, we have some sound effects like that rolling thunder. So let's rename this track to SFX or sound effects. Let's click out of that box. And if I now expand these layers, they're now called original music and sound effects. So let's make the timeline a little bit smaller so the audio track mixer is a little bit bigger. And in the audio track mixer, every audio track in your timeline has a bunch of additional controls. At the top, you'll find a pan wheel. This controls whether the sound comes out of your left or the right speaker, so you can kind of pan the music left or right. Then there's mute, solo, and record switches. Mute and solo we talked about, record might be for another course. And then underneath that, you have a master fader for this track. This controls the audio volume for the entire track. So for all clips that sit on this original audio track, this is the slider for it. If I bring that down to minus 20 decibels, now this entire audio track, all sound clips that are on this audio track one are reduced by minus 20 decibels. Let's play this back. And you can hardly hear the sound from the original audio clips. Let's rewind a little bit, come back into the audio track mixer. Let's bring up this original sound back to zero. You can also double click onto this fader handle and it'll snap it back to zero. Let's bring the music down to maybe minus 15 or so. And again, let's play this back. Now the music is a whole lot softer. And the great thing is we didn't have to fiddle with the audio for any of the individual clips. We just controlled the audio for the entire track. And that makes it super easy if you have a whole bunch of audio files or sound effects and you think that either the music is too soft or maybe the sound effects are too loud. You can simply adjust the audio volume for the entire track and all of the keyframes that we've added, like this hiding of the door slam sound, will still be applied. But on top of that, you'll also have the adjustment from the audio track mixer. If you want to make your entire video louder or softer, in the audio track mixer, you will also find a master fader. And this is the volume adjusted that will get applied to all of your audio tracks combined. So all of these audio tracks, audio track one, two, three, and however many you have, end up flowing into this master channel. And in here, you can then lower the volume for your entire video or bring it up if it's a little bit too soft. Now, finally, let's talk about something just a little bit more intricate. Note that on this audio clip here, we've adjusted the volume down and we've added some keyframes. At the bottom of the audio track, you'll find a number of controls. You find two arrows, which indicate to go to next keyframe and go to previous keyframe. You can click on these and it'll jump the timeline indicator to the next keyframe on that clip. So you can simply jump between the keyframes. Right now, I can't go back any further because there are no more keyframes on this track. This little diamond icon here indicates whether you are currently on a keyframe. It's blue because right now the timeline indicator actually sits on this particular keyframe. If I scrub that off a little bit, this indicator will go white. But again, if I jump between the keyframes, it'll go back to blue as long as this timeline indicator is directly on a keyframe. Now, over to the left-hand side, you'll find this little diamond with a drop-down. And if you click on that, 
you can control what this horizontal white line represents. Right now, it represents the clip keyframes, the audio for that particular clip. But you can actually change that to represent the track keyframes for the volume or the mute switch. Or you can set that to represent the balance. Let's come into the track keyframes and select volume. And now this horizontal bar here represents the volume as set by this master key fader. If I bring this master key fader for audio track one down to maybe minus 10, you'll see this white line jump down because I've adjusted that volume. If I bring it back up, it'll jump back up. Now you will notice that this horizontal line extends way past any clips because it represents the audio volume for this entire track and not for a specific clip. And the great thing is, once again, you can add keyframes on this exactly the same way you did before. Simply hold down Control or Command and click to create a keyframe. Let's come back a little bit and create one here as well and let's bring this down. So now we're animating the audio volume for the entire track. This is totally independent of the clip, so I can move these keyframes independent of any cuts between my clips because, again, they just represent the volume for the entire track, not for a specific clip. The cool thing is, let's zoom out just a little bit, have a look at the audio track mixer on this master fader here for audio track one. Let's scrub back a little bit and you'll see that fader come down because we've animated it. So the movement of this fader follows the animation that we've drawn in here onto our volume line for this audio track. Let's rewind and just play this back. You can see the fader creeping up right there. Cool, so now you have full control over the volume of a specific audio clip, as well as the overall audio volume for that track. Let's come back into the show keyframes option, click on that, and let's bring that to the track panel and select balance. Now, this controls whether your audio comes from the left or the right speaker, and that can sometimes be cool if you add an audio effect for something that happens on the left side of the screen and you pan it to the left side so it feels like it's coming from the left side. So really useful or kind of panning music left and right just to create all sorts of trippy effects. Again, works the same way. You can drag this up or down to control the panning and it'll get reflected in the audio track mixer. You can add keyframes to this line and do anything you want. And keep in mind that the balance, as well as the animations for the balance, the track keyframes for volume or for muting the entire track, as well as the clip keyframes, which we've already added, they all work together. They just give you different levels of granularity to control the audio for your video. And with that, I hope you now have a solid understanding of how to add edit, layer, composite, videos, titles, images, other media onto your timeline, how to add music, sound effects, control their volume, and then finally export that video into a final video file that you can share with friends, family, or the rest of the world via the internet.